turns out I needed to have like six root canals and a bunch of bone grafts and uh. some other crap. And over the course of the last like four weeks, I have been getting my jaw operated on. Well, at least you're taking care of it because. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So it was going to cost like $15,000. And I was like, dude, you can look at my shoes and tell that I'm not going to be able to pay this bill. And I was like, I don't know, like, whose baby? You know, I'm thinking, like, I got a lot of white friends with babies. And, like, I could probably get a lot of money for a <laughs> stolen white child. <laughs> so I'm, like, texting my homie in California. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how I let it get to this point, but what am I going to do? And uh, she started a GoFundMe, oh. which I was so embarrassed. I was like, no, come on. I can't, like, ask Internet people. And she was like, but you have this blog, and it's free, and you give everybody joy. And in four days, they raised $16,000. Really? Yeah. That is amazing. It's incredible. You, it's you're incredible. just hashtag blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Kanye, but now I'm here. Yeah, you sound great. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> you. speaking of your blog, uh, mm -hmm. it's very popular, has a very mm -hmm. interesting title. Yes. It's called Bitches Gotta Eat. Yes. What inspired that? Well, I don't know what your listeners, I hope they understand this reference. <laughs> so, Boys in the Hood, uh -huh. when they're at the barbecue in the beginning. All right, y'all, come and get it. And the dudes all push to the front, and the chick's like, no. Do you live here? Okay. And they're like, hey, why don't you act like gentlemen and let these ladies eat first? Hoes gotta eat too. And she's like, I ain't no ho. And he's like, well, I'm sorry, bitch. That's where, <laughs> That's where it came from. <laughs> It's not a food blog. Everybody's always like, bitches got to eat. What do you write recipes? <laughs> yeah. But at least it's not like the dating guide to dating. <laughs> and you have a book out. I do have a book out. The book is called Meaty. How yeah. does it feel to be a legitimate author? Um, Weird. I did not get the ticker tape parade I expected. <laughs> also, my life has changed not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to work like 50 hours a week at my same real job. <laughs> I still am sweating all the time because I'm wearing natural deodorant to not get Alzheimer's. Isn't it weird being – I mean you are a legitimate artist, but you have that – you have to go to work and then uh -huh. it's like being a superhero. Yeah. That's such a good way to put it. <laughs> it really, like that really is what it's like. Yeah, no, that. See, oh man, you're the best. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. I work in an animal hospital, and I've worked there for twelve years, and it's weird for people who have known me the entire time I've worked there to read my stuff now oh. because. They like they saw they saw me in the paper. They I was in Chicago Magazine. I was like in a few things that make it to suburban housewives, <laughs> and uh, people are like, "Oh no, I never had any idea that you were talented or a person." <laughs> I You're like a you, legitimate human being. Yeah, I just thought you like gave me my dog food and stuff. I didn't know like <laughs> you could type, and I'm like, yeah. Like this woman was in yesterday and she was like, I just want to tell you that I read your book and I know so much about your butthole. And I was just like, because <laughs> you don't think about that. You know, I'm just like, butts, butts, butts. Like when I'm writing it, like I don't think about real people being like, hmm. In Chicago, there's the storytelling scene that's mm -hmm. developing right now. I know that you're you're into an aspect of that. Yeah. I used to write in high school, but like, you know, the way everybody wrote in high school, like in your journal and mm. on like the borders of your converse, like my <laughs> sad poetry. <laughs> I like write on the white parts of my converse. I wrote a lot of fiction in high school because that was my thing then. What type of fiction? Uh, just short stories. Okay. Was yeah. it sort of fantasy no, I think – oh, man, we're about to get real deep real quick. <laughs> I, think, I think – there. My so my childhood was kind of terrible. It was okay. okay, but it was kind of terrible. Like in and out of foster care, kind of terrible. Gotcha. And so I think I wrote stories that were really thinly veiled – what my life would really be like if I, if I like, you know, could be the architect of my life. So it was basically like every story was 
an ugly duckling who got the hot dude and like burned the high school to the ground. <laughs> it's everything you can wish for. You got the hot yeah. dude, burned. <laughs> yeah, burned all of my enemies alive. Like I can hear their screams. <laughs> and I was like doing it in the really nice clothes because I didn't have nice clothes. <laughs> That's the thing I like about your blog is that it has an aspect that feels like one of those journals. You don't capitalize letters, mm-hmm. something I noticed. I don't know. I don't know why. It pisses a lot of people off. But I love it. I think the only people who complain are people who don't like what I write about anyway. Uh, and that's just the added mm-hmm. excuse. Yeah. there. It's easier than being like, I hate this black bitch. <laughs> it's, you know, or how dare you. You know, I get a lot of feedback on posts that are like, Ugh, why are you dating a dude without a checking account? <laughs> like, there's always someone in those responses that are like, I couldn't understand this because it wasn't capitalized. And it's like, no, you live with your mom and you're mad that I said you shouldn't have dates. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> What is it that you feel your blog tapped into that makes it so popular? I think it's because I am so honest about things that are hard to be honest about. You know, there's a lot of like – I even read them. There are a few like style blogs and stuff where you look at these people's lives and it's like, man, she's perfect. She's 27. She appears to have (laughs) endless amounts of money and (laughs) designer clothes. It's like, I'm going to kill myself looking at that. (laughs) And then here I come being like, oh, my God, I sweat through my clothes and I'm wearing a diaper. And people are like, yes. Yes. This is what I want to hear about. You are the Louis (laughs) C.K. of the the blog world. Oh, man. Can that be my, like, new title? I think so. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's decided, jerks. I'm the Louis C.K. If you could describe to me the storytelling scene in Chicago, because it's something that I feel isn't clearly defined, but it it is something. Okay, so the storytelling scene. There are shows like The Moth, Mm -hmm. which highly popular. Yep, super popular. It's competitive, which there are few competitive shows, and it's off book, which I don't really love. I don't love that. I like to know that you sat down and you worked on a piece and you made it good. But not that I'm so great. It's I mean, you could be like, you know, your show is stupid. And I'd be like, well, OK. Now, what is um, it that makes a storytelling show boring? Oh, my God. When your Aunt Janice is <laughs> reading 5,000 words uh. about a quilt that she made <laughs> in monotone. <laughs> With no jokes in it. <laughs> I mean, well, I think that yeah. that's a, that's the that's the fear that people have when people tell a story and they're reading off the page is the monotone NPR sounding. Well, I don't mind that if like it's compelling in okay. any way. Like for me, if you start off with material that's edgy, oh, yeah. I hate words like edgy, but edgy. that's edgy or brash, brash, bold. <laughs> 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 Like if you're not gonna sit and talk to me about like your favorite macaroni and cheese recipe, or <laughs> or you could, but then tell me how you ate it, and then uh. you shit your pants on the bus <laughs> because it was too. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if there's some element of like shitting yourself or fighting or sex is always good. Illicit sex is even <laughs> better. While eating macaroni. While eating. Oh, there. Mm. There. See. Macaroni sex. <laughs> Let's start that Tumblr right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm with it. Oh, my God. We would be so famous. Yeah. Who doesn't love macaroni and cheese? Yeah. And we can get vegetarians on board. We, we're not the, alienating anyone. Who doesn't anyone? want to try macaroni sex? I mean, without <laughs> yeah. knowing specifically what it is, it sounds enticing. Yeah, people are like, oh, okay. You know, all right. I'd consider, I'd consider yeah. that. What do I have to do? It sounds like a hot new Beyonce track. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Beyonce could be our patron saint of macaroni, macaroni sex. sex yeah. Now that she's doing this new sex yeah. vibe, mm-hmm. we're like, hey, Beyonce, you want to push that envelope even further? Surfboard with some macaroni. <laughs>